All right, it's finally here. The thing I've been waiting for for a long time is the Audio Technica USB microphone, and this is the ATR2500 USB microphone from Audio Technica. This is going to solve a bunch of my problems for making tutorials and doing other stuff like gameplay. This microphone is so easy to set up, it's ridiculous. I've just plugged it directly into my Windows 10 computer and automatically downloaded the drivers, installed everything up, and it's all ready to go. So if I check out in my um, recording devices, here it is, it's showing up straight away, my microphone, ATR USB microphone. Now, one thing I need to do here is I need to make sure that the levels are set correctly. So I'm going to go to levels, and I'm going to, I'm going to set it to 50. That's kind of important for what I want to do. I need it to be increase the volume a little bit. I think it will set it by default at 25. So make sure you go and do that. Now, the next thing I need to do is I need to set up this thing called a cable output. Now, to do this, I'm going to use something that's a free program. And it's important. This is important later on for when I do my routing inside Ableton. Um, I want to process this microphone with some plugins and then send that out to my recording software. In this case, it's OBS. Now, um, the reason I want to process this microphone is so that I don't have to do post-processing anymore. I can do pre-processing and have my microphone sounding really nice, get rid of all the plosives, um, compress it, give it a bit of reverb, but also do some gating and cut out the background noise. Now, this microphone that I'm using at the moment is an XLR microphone. It's a, a Rode NT-A, NT1-A uh, XLR microphone. It is absolutely brilliant for recording vocals, but the problem with it is it picks up everything. At the moment, I've packed some foam into the back of it to try and stop picking up all the outside background noise, and it's just not working. So I've decided to use this USB microphone and do some pre-processing and um, have it take care of all my audio issues. Okay, so let's take a look at this cable output then. What is this? Well, basically, I've installed this already, and I'm going to run you through the process. It's basically a, a, a virtual audio cable, and I'm going to send the microphone to it, uh, to this device here, and use this in OBS. So um, basically, I'm going to route this through my door, and I'm going to show you how to do that in a second. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to check out this audio cable. Now, there are different ones out there. This one here is great, and I'll tell you the reason why it's great, because it's free. If you want to add another cable to it, you can um, donate some money, and they don't set in a donation amount. You can set the amount yourself to buy extra cables. So you're basically paying for what you want to pay, um, and you're paying for what you want. So that's kind of, kind of really cool. So what we're going to do is we're going to download this. So I'm going to show them Finder. I'm going to open this up. There we go. So I'm going to create a new folder on my desktop. There we go. And I'm going to drag all these files to it. Now, it's quite important that at this stage, you know what your OS is. Now, I know that mine is 64-bit, so I'm going to look for the VB cable setup x64. Now, this is important too. I've read the instructions. You must do this, otherwise it doesn't, it doesn't work. You must run as administrator. Uh, so I'm going to do that. But I'm not going to do this because I've already installed it. And if I click on this, it's going to remove my drive. And I don't want to because I have to restart my machine. So once you've installed it, restart your computer. And then what you should see is um, the cable output here in the recording section and the cable input here in the playback. Now, uh, to get up the control panel, there's this application here, which is um, control panel. Now, if I click on my one, which is down here, it brings up this window and it tells you the inputs and outputs that you've got selected here. So that's all you really need to worry about. Um, I'm not going to worry about any latency or anything like that. I'll just use it as default, as it is, as it was installed, no extra modifications uh, at all. All right, so now that that's done, we need to route this through Ableton so we can make our voice sound absolutely awesome. So I'm going to open up live. Now I've already made all my um, patches and everything like that. I've got my channel set up. So what we might do is we might just go over it. Um, let's make this full window here. Now all the chains are down here and I'm in the way. So we're going to try and squeeze myself around these. Now the first thing that we need to worry about in Ableton is the audio settings. So we go to options and preferences and we check out the audio. Now I've had to choose MME Direct X. This gives me uh, the ability to choose the audio input device, in this case, uh, the microphone, ATR USB microphone. 
and um, that is important that it's got DX next to it. The next thing I've got to choose is the output device. Now this is where we use our virtual cable. So I'm going to choose the virtual cable uh, input VB audio virtual cable DX. Now um, for the input configuration, I just leave it as it is. I don't have to do anything extra there. The output configuration, leave it as is. The next thing you need to worry about is the latency. Now we need to reduce the latency the best we can because we want to have this process really fast. But if we reduce it too much, the audio is going to crackle and pop and it's going to sound nasty. And you don't want that. So you might have to increase your buffer and you might have to increase your um, output latency so that you are able to um, process your audio and have it come out sounding nice. Okay, so at the moment my input buffer size is 528 samples. My uh, output buffer size is 1552. That gives me an output latency of 32.3 and a total output latency of 43.3 milliseconds. Now that's all I need to do. I don't have to do anything else. That is set up. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is we need to we needed to create an audio channel. Now by default, Ableton loads up um, I think it's three MIDI channels and one audio channel. I deleted all the MIDI channels, so basically you're going to have something that's got these kind of things in it like that. I basically deleted all the extra ones and have just used one audio channel. Now I've placed all my processing on the audio channel. You can place it on the master bus if you want. It doesn't really matter because I've got a limiter on the end of my chain. Anything that's sent to the master is never going to go over 0 dB. So let's take a look at what we've got. Okay, the first one is a limiter. Now I'm going to move to the side a little bit so you can see what's going on here. Now the limiter is just to catch all the peaks. Now at the moment um, you can see the peak meter going up and down and that's because the microphone is attached now to Ableton and we can see that reading coming in. One thing I forgot to actually mention is that you must click on this button here where my mouse is circling around. This, otherwise there's no sound. Okay, so basically we'll click on record. So we're arming that track. Okay, so getting back to the limiter. Now set a negative 3.2 dB on the gain. That's just to catch any peaks. So if I, if I do this, you can see it peaking into the red, right? It's never going to go for 0 dB and that is what we want. Okay, so we're trying to catch all the peaks here. This is what this is for. Set, the ceiling is set at negative 0.3 dB and that is just so that we never ever hit the zero. Now the next one is the gate. Let's move to this side so we can see what's going on. Now the gate um, is basically going to cut out all the background noises. So if I take this microphone here like this right, there's a click. When I start talking the gate opens up again. When I stop it shuts and all the background noise is cut out. That's what the gate's for and that's what make, makes this setup absolutely awesome for gaming uh, and for tutorials because at the moment this microphone, the XLR, is capturing absolutely everything, all the environmental noise. This USB microphone is not and that is the difference. This is the reason why I've, I've chosen to go down the USB, um, the USB route. Now there is a way to do it with my XLR mic but I need the inputs on my sound card for something else. All right. Let's take a look at the settings. The threshold is set to negative uh, 34.6 dB. Now um, there is this little triangle button here and inside here we've got a sidechain and an EQ. I'm not using any of those, they're off. Um, the return is set to 3 dB. Uh, and what else we've got down here? The look ahead is it just set at by default 1.5 milliseconds. The attack is on 7.16 milliseconds. Hold is on 10.4 milliseconds. Releases on 171 milliseconds. Now that is pretty much how fast it releases, and it's held open for quite a long time. And that's just to allow uh, my voice to actually uh, still continue talking and not having it cut off. Now then, uh, the floor is set to negative 49.4 dB, and that's when it that's when it comes down. All right. So the next setting we're looking at is the EQ. Now I've been playing around with this EQ, I don't think it's still quite right. I think I still need to do a little bit of work on it. Uh, I kind of want to add a bit more low into my voice, but at the moment I haven't really worked out what that setting is. So the EQ is pretty much um, just set like this. Now on the 1 we've got, it's set at 112 hertz. It, the Q is on 0.71 and it's on a low cut. 
So it's taking all the low frequencies below 112 and getting rid of them because we don't need those. The, um, the male voice is sort of around about 120 upwards and that kind of thing. Unless you've got a really low baritone voice and then you're really low. Now there's a 4 here. The 4 is set to um, 187 hertz. It's got a gain of uh, negative 0 0.7. And that is just basically just taking a little bit out, and the Q set to 2.03, and so we're just taking a little bit more of the lows out. The next um, part of the EQ is uh, on the 5, and we've set that to 4.49 kilohertz. Now, um, I think that this is not quite right. I think that we kind of really need to boost this in the 3 kilohertz range, and there is a reason for that. Um, when I'm making music and doing productions and things like that, I find that um, we kind of need to boost the vocal in the 3K range and cut the 3K range out in the actual musicality of the track. So that's what we're going to I'm just going to add a little bit in the 3K. So um, that's 3.06K, a gain of 1.36 dB and a Q of 0.93. So we've kind of got like a bit of a, 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 like a wide curve there, boosting those frequencies. The next one is like a high shelf. Um, it's on the 6 and that's at 9.49 kilohertz. It's just giving a bit more high end, a bit more sh shine on the high end there. And we've got that set to plus 1.36 dB and a Q of 0.71. That's the EQ. Uh, it's a bit complicated, I think, for you to get your head around. But we're kind of shaping the sound of our voice. And at the moment, this will do for now. Okay, the next one is reverb. Now you've got to be careful with the reverb, you can overdo it and you can make yourself sound like you're in a big empty hall and you're all by yourself. And um, if you're looking for that effect, that might be great, but if you're doing a voiceover, it can sound really stupid. So I've chosen small room as a preset. I've taken down the size to 1.03 and I've also reduced the dry wet to 2.4%. Now that's not very much, but that this may even be too much already. So we're looking for a very, very small amount of reverb. Okay, let's close up the EQ and open up the next one, which is the de-easer, or de -esser, depending on how you want to say it or pronounce it. Um, I've chosen, I think I chose it, the, the de -esser preset, and I've gone and just changed a few things. I think I might have changed the threshold. So the threshold is at negative 23.2 dB, and the output I've boosted to 10.9 dB. Okay, so that's kind of quite important because we're trying to take the input volume of the microphone, uh, do all the processing on it, and then compress it, and then send it back out at a decent volume that we can hear it again. So I'm trying to just boost the volume, the output volume, to be almost like the input volume, but not pushing 0 dB. Okay, so let's close down the small room reverb, and then open up the next one, which is a standard multi-band compression. Now I did change these um, presets a little bit. So we're looking at uh, negative 10.6 dB on the low, uh, negative 11.3 dB on the mid, and negative 26.3 dB on the input. Now all I did was change the output gains uh, and that's pretty much it. Um, so I've left it at 100% because I want to actually compress stuff and I want the effect to be that. The next one is a limiter, and I've just put a limiter on the end just in case somehow in our processing we've managed to increase the volume so much that we're going back over 0 dB. So this is pretty much set, the gain set to 0, and the ceiling is set to negative 0 0.3 dB. Now if you've got all that, and you understand all that, that's great. If not, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this as a download, and you can grab this, um, this template and use it in your own settings if you've got Ableton 9. So um, that's going to save you a lot of work. Now, what I probably want to change in this is the EQ and the multiband compression, because I'm not sure how it's going to sound yet. And I think I might need to change the low on the multiband compression, just so that I've got some low. Because if, if I take too much out, then it's gone. And I kind of want my voice to have a bit of deepness to it, as well as a nice high sparkle. All right, so now let's take a look at OBS. Here it is. Oh no, we've got the magic window thing. Um, so without looking at the magic window thing, what we've got to do now is we need to sort out our microphones. Now, I have my main microphone here, uh, the mic aux of my um, Complete 6 audio interface, and here's my USB microphone here. 
Now, I actually have already added this, um, so I'm going to show you how to do it. Let's actually remove that. Yes, I do want to remove that. Now, um, I think I may get some echo here, so I'm going to be quiet for a second while I add this microphone, and then we'll um, reduce the volume and then talk about it. So first of all, I'm going to add a source. I'm going to choose an audio output capture, and we're going to name this um, USB mic. There we go. And add that. I'm going to choose the cable input VB Audio virtual cable. I'm just going to turn down the volume so that we're not hearing it. But that should be added now. And uh, what I can do is I can actually switch over the microphones by turning this one down. And turning this one up. So now we have switched over to the USB microphone. It should sound a lot different. And in some cases it may be a bit clearer. I'm holding it so you might get a bit of noise from me holding it. What I want to do now is I want to disconnect my Rode microphone and connect my USB microphone and see if it's going to make a difference through the pop filter because we're still getting plosives and the plosives are the P's and the pops from my vocals uh, and the pop filter is going to take away those plosives and give us a more rounded sound. Uh, with all our processing on this microphone we should have something sounding pretty nice. So let's go ahead and test this now. Okay, the pop filter is on. I've managed to put the USB microphone into the shock mount and it seems to be okay. I'm a little bit upset about the little plastic locking ring that comes with the um, USB microphone. The Audio Technica, it is very, very bad. Um, it's not strong. I don't feel like it's got enough purchase. Uh, it's like the, the plastic has expanded and it feels like my microphone may fall out. So I, I'm going to have to replace it with something a little bit more solid. I don't have anything right now, so I'm going to have to go get something. Um, and also, the USB cable is a bit short. I'd like a longer one um, because my computer is a bit further away than most. So I may have to get a longer USB cable or a, an adapter to, to lengthen or something. Um, but we'll see how we go. Um, we're committed now, so we're going to give this a good try. Uh, I think that the vocal sounds okay. Still need a little bit of work on my settings. I was having a bit of play with the gate. I noticed that when I turned my head over to the side, um, the gate the gate triggered and it cut my voice off. So I've had to adjust the settings a little bit. So you, you have a look at my settings, and you may need to adjust yours the same. So I just um, I changed the return, the threshold, and the release and hold times. Everything else I think is, is the same. I pretty much changed most of it. So. Um, just making sure that my voice doesn't cut off when I turn to the side and um, lean back a bit. So that's what I was doing there. It looks like it's going to work fine. So we'll give it a good test and I'll catch you next time. See ya.